All right, before we uh, talk more about the budget with Frank Koetch, I want to ask you about our last superintendent of schools, Gary Norris, who never seemed to sort of be able to connect with the community. And I, I think you have to say that his tenure here was, was a failure in my view. Why do you think that uh, he had such a tough time and ended up leaving? Well, we have, uh, you know, because we've talked about the referendum earlier. I think because of the referendum, we probably much more under a microscope with the community and the community is a lot more demanding than and I think that was even before the referendum and we do have a demanding community that wants accountability and I have absolutely no problem with that um, I think that I thought Gary was a great guy he was probably the most ethical person I've ever known he moved our career and technical education light years ahead I think the biggest concern I had was just lack of fiscal restraint uh, and that's certainly not, he's not the only one that, you know, that I'd have that beef with in government. I think, you know, a lot of bureaucrats have that problem. It's that other people's money thing when you're spending other people's money, you know, quite oftentimes with people there, maybe don't use the same restraint that they would with their own dollars. Well, and, and now now it's time to pay the piper. We, we hear that you're looking at having to cut $31 million this yeah, year. Closer uh, to 40. $40, $40 million. What do you look? I mean, who's going to get hit hardest? Uh, well, we're doing away with our our data and uh, literacy coaches, who are basically teachers, which means they're going to go back into the classroom. Um, you know, the problem with that forty million dollars, Ron, though, is that only about twelve million of it is reduced state revenues. Uh, our our referendum revenues are dropping about seven million dollars, or at least that's what we think. We're spending about thirteen million dollars in reserves this year so we need to make up for that um, we we'll have about a thousand less students next year that's another over four million dollars so uh, I mean you know there's a lot of cuts but you know a lot of different reasons for that cut I think your average person thinks it's because we got forty million dollars less revenues from the state but uh, I think we have a like I mentioned to you earlier I think we have every bit as much a spending problem as we have a revenue problem controversial subject what about the possibility of cutting teacher pay I mean existing teachers that we haven't work. really gotten to that and I really don't see that as as being a need probably one of my frustrations with you know when we went out for the referendum was you know the public said they wanted to increase teachers pay and I think everybody agrees that we should increase teachers pay my frustration is we were never never able with the union because they represent both classified and teachers we were never able to separate those raises from the classified staff from administrators whatever we gave to teachers we gave to everybody else so you know it's got you know it really mushroomed our salaries i read i read also <coughs> that the legislature somebody's proposed a bill in the legislature that will allow school board members and the superintendents of schools to voluntarily take pay cuts did you hear about that? I've heard, I've heard rumors, and we went through that back in 2002 or something, and it had more to do, at least at that time, because uh, school board members were making more money than state representatives were making. And but neither one frankly, really I makes think, a whole lot, right? No, but quite frankly, I think we do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> I think we work harder. What do you think of the FCAT? Uh, I think it's a, it's a terrific tool for accountability. Uh, I don't think that uh, uh, I'm not really happy with the way the money's tied to it sometimes. You see uh, schools get it and, and um, you know, not so much. It can be as much about where the school is and who their student population is, is, you know, actual uh, increases in student achievement. But I think as a taxpayer, which we all are, I think it's a great tool for accountability and I think we should have it and I think we're going to continue to have it and I really haven't heard too many people think we should do away with it and you know the reality is you go to any state in the country just about and they have a form of an FCAT for accountability. If you could be the uh, absolute king for a day or the dictator over the school system and you had nobody to answer to and you could change one thing about the Sarasota County school system what would it be well I've always been frustrated with the fact that we promote and retain based on seniority I think we should promote and retain based on uh, quality of the work ethic and the uh, their abilities and their strengths and uh, you know we lose some very young and very bright teachers as well as other employees based strictly on seniority 
and coming from business, I think that's a really poor way to make personnel decisions. So you would you would you would allow maybe the principals and stuff to make evaluations. I think so, and I, you know I have uh, you know I'm probably one of the few that don't have a problem with performance pay. I think we should give raises based on performance too, which is uh, a definite no-no in the in the uh, district that we're in. All right, Frank, you got some tough work ahead of you. Thanks for coming on the yep, show. Thank you very much for having me. That's Claude nine four one. Next week's guest is going to be uh, is going to be Nathan Lee, who is the husband of. Um, of murder victim uh, Denise Lee and he's going to talk about his problems with the 911 system in Florida. See you next week.